Okay, so in this assignment, what I'm asking you to do is to, is to build something called a cubist collage. And uh, although that may, may sound kind of art historical and complicated, it really is a kind of summation, a, a, um, uh, a, we, a using of all the things you've used through the semester to make a kind of individual and creative space. In other words, in other words you're, you're much more free in this kind of assignment if you just pay attention to a few basic principles. Um, in your previous assignments of the, the wash paintings, remember how you did very different kinds of illusions? You know, something like this was supposed to, and does very well, show the, the, the deep space, the fact that things are off in the distance, the fact that things are overlapping, that they have uh, shadows and highlights. It's a kind of, although as abstract as it is, it's a kind of logical, spatial uh, illusion. Remember the other ones that were transparent, okay, you had a kind of uh, flat set of forms that were uh, overlapping slightly and you were able to mix opaquely the colors as they intersected one another and you ended up with uh, not a watercolor wash but a, but a kind of illusion of transparency because you had mixed adjacent colors. So there was that kind of space, there was also the, 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 the complicated space of relief, okay, it's, it's not a deep space, it's not a uh, a distant space, but it is uh, a surface. And surface is an interesting word to keep in mind with this particular assignment. With this surface of relief, you were trying to do, and did very well, um, physical surfaces that had a kind of texture, that had a kind of organization, that had a kind of up and down that wasn't a deep space, but a kind of undulating sculptural surface. Well, can you imagine in this next assignment, uh, not doing it literally, but thinking about scrambling those things up. In other words, uh, with Cubism, you had artists of the early 20th century uh, being sort of uh, outdistanced and overachieved by, say, movies, uh, film, photography, uh, technology, communication, uh, transportation. In other words, there's a speeding up of, of, of culture and society in the, in the late 19th and especially early, early 20th century. So what was painting to do? What was art to do? What was, what was uh, especially painting, where you had uh, its job being copying reality, right? You know, portraits, landscapes, uh, still lives, etc. Uh, in other words, what was the painter to do? What was the artist to do if her job was not simply to, to copy reality? Well, one of the solutions to that, there were many, but one of the solutions to that that, that was strong in the early 20th century was cubism, and strange enough, strangely as that, that sounds, strange as that sounds, cubism, it was a style that, in a simplified manner, it, it took a scene and broke it up into different perspectives. In other words, you were not seeing a given thing from one particular point of view, one logical, uh, sculptural point of view, but you were sort of combining and colliding, shattering and reassembling a lot of different sorts of, of, uh, of points of view. So what I'm asking us to do in a more playful way, in a more fanciful way, is to think about a portrait. Think about um, a face or a figure, or, or figures and faces. The human body, the human body, the human face especially, that's uh, capable of, com of communicating expression and emotion and attitude, okay? And what I'd like you to do is to take Magazine clippings, okay? Uh, given our situation right now, that may be, may be a little bit difficult, but as best you can, can you gather magazine clippings, especially those, those materials that might be from sports magazines, fashion magazines, magazines that, that, uh, that contain a lot of faces and figures, okay? And begin to take out pieces of those and then reassemble them in a way that's not just toppings on a pizza, but really a kind of geometric fitting together, a semi-geometric fitting together of, of, uh, of different parts from different figures, from different faces, so that the whole that you make has a kind of unity, has a kind of expression, has really a, a kind of humorous or tragic or whatever uh, emotional content, but you're dealing with something that you have created. You've created from many sources, okay? So you're constructing the face and figure not as a kind of blank, uh, round, as I say, pizza, 
with lots of toppings on top, but you're actually perhaps taking the pizza slices and making them into to different sorts of geometric solids and fitting them back together. Uh, and the space itself, the space itself around the figures, is an interesting thing to consider because it doesn't have to necessarily be, it can be, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a blank background. Try to think of the space as being active. Try to think of the space as being an extension of the energy and, and unpredictability of the features, the figures, the faces themselves, right? So perhaps a given shape that happens in the face and the figure could be echoed in a very casual way, intuitive way, out in the, the space around the figures. And if there's a little bit of ambiguity, a little bit of, uh, of difficulty in figuring out what exactly might be a uh, solid figure face versus what space, all the better, because the cubists were trying to, to uh, to, to sort of confuse us a little bit, to sort of give us the energy of, of, uh, of puzzlement in terms of, of what's space, what's real figure. A uh, beautiful one along these lines is this one, where you, know, you see the figure in its parts almost bleeding into a kind of shattered geometric space. Okay? Uh, there's one here that is indeed uh, sort of repulsive in a sense, interestingly repulsive in a sense, but nonetheless a really energetic uh, combination of, of shapes constructing the face, not just floating in the face, but constructing the face and the space around it becoming a kind of extension of that sort of energy and geometry. A more placid, a more peaceful, a more um, uh, elegant piece for me is this one here where there is a little bit of difference between the space and the figure, but you can see how the, the construction of the space uh, sort of follows through the same style, the same family of shapes that happen within the face of the figure. So the emotion is up to you. I mean, and, and you may not determine and try to chase it deliberately or consciously, but you could uh, be open to the fact that, that there's, a, there's a kind of psychological edge to these things, that there is a kind of shattered uh, unity to the way these faces are put together. My particular favorite um, is this one here, where it shows just about all you need to know about constructing a face, uh, elegantly, well-crafted, um, sensitively, and how the space around that, that figure uh, sort of continues the same uh, attitude, continues the same uh, style of composition, continues the same um, uh, feeling. And, you know, to, to me, this one doesn't have to be, this one isn't necessarily horrific or tragic or comedy or slapstick or, or you know, um, overly romantic. It's simply, to me, you know, a very subtle, pensive, uh, thoughtful sort of, uh, of, of emotion. Okay? So you don't have to, you can go for the, the slapstick and the explosive emotions, but also I think this style is open to to all sorts of other uh, subtle, intuitive, and more nuanced emotions.